Greetings to all of you in the name of Jesus and welcome to Bible in a Year. This is day 333 and we've been pushing to get through this Bible. Bible in a Year is a video series that follows the reading plan Bible in a Year 2020 with Nikki Gumbel that you can find on the YouVersion Bible app. And what we're doing is we, we're, we've endeavored to read through the entire Bible for the year 2020. And in my opinion, if there was ever a time that we need the Word of God, then certainly now is that time. With as much uncertainty and instability that we've seen this year, we need something solid. We need something that's not going to change, something that's not going to switch up on us. We need something dependable. And the Word of God is exactly that. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. Not one jot, not one tittle, not the smallest mark of the word of God is going to fail. So it's incredibly important for us to get into the word. This is how we grow spiritually. This is how we become strong. This is how we begin to build faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if this is your first time joining us for this video series, Bible in a Year, I want to first of all welcome you to Digital Disciple Ministries. And I want to get you to make a commitment to the word of God. I want you to get into the Bible, spend time with God, and be intentional about it every single day so that you can establish a foundation on which you are building your house. We don't want just a uh, convenient time. Oh, I'll listen to the Bible on my way to work or I'll read the Bible while I'm sitting at the DMV, which you know what, <clears throat> that's cool, do that. But make sure that that's not the only time that you're spending time with God. Make sure that you have intentional time set aside specifically for that reason alone because that is special to God. So let's get into the scriptures. I've got several verses here that stood out to me throughout the reading that I'd like to get into with you all and we'll have a little discussion. Now, as is custom for me to do, I'm going to be reading from the King James version of the Bible, but you all can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version uh, you are most comfortable with. So we find ourselves in the book of Psalms. We're in chapter 135, and I'd like to look at verse 13 with you all. Here is what the Bible says. Thy name, O Lord, endureth forever, and thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. When I read this verse, this is what I thought about. I thought about the name of the Lord. I thought about the name of the Lord lasting. Then for some reason, <clears throat> I began to think about all of the name brands that I used to wear that, you know, they're not around anymore really like that. Does anybody remember RP55? Does anybody remember Boss? Does anybody remember Pure Players? This, this name brand. What about, what about Fila <laughs> or Reebok? Not as popular as they used to be. There are some name brands that just didn't last. What about Starter? Man, when I was in school, the thing was having a starter jacket and a football team with that. So, I wanted a San Francisco starter jacket and I never got one, praise God. But starter was something that was very popular. And uh, what was the name of that <clears throat> book bag? Jansport. Jansport was a name brand. And now I don't see these things anymore. Maybe you have, I don't know. I haven't. But the point is that these names didn't last. What about guess? Remember guest jeans, all of my old heads? 
<laughs> amongst whom am I also being 40 now? Praise God. Uh, what, what other brands are there? <clears throat> Nautica is still around and so is Tommy Hilfiger, but I don't think that they're as big as they were when I was in high school. Well, some of these names just didn't last. Oh, what about cross colors? Does anybody remember cross colors? <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, we had all kinds of stuff. Or, or what about uh, Paco jeans? Oh, yeah. And Jenko. I never had any Jenko jeans. Praise God. But hey, there were a lot out there. And but these name brands, they didn't last. I don't see that around the day. I, I don't wear any of that today. I don't have, <clears throat> well, I, I think I have a Nautica thing, but it was old. If I still do, I don't know if I do. I used to have Tommy Hilfiger. I used to have Reebok. I used to have Fila all the time. I remember my brother got his first pair of name brand shoes. It was a pair of Fila and he got them for his birthday. I think they were like 50 bucks and that was like a lot of money, maybe $70 or something like that. And that was a lot of money. Maybe they were a hundred dollars, but it was a lot of money. And after the fact, my grandmother decided that, you know what, man, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> this will be the last time that I buy that. And, uh, but anyways, he got it for his birthday and man, he rocked them shoes. Now, Fila is on the low end of shoes. You didn't, don't have to spend a lot of money for Fila. The Bible says, thy name, O Lord, endureth forever. You'll never have to worry about the name of Jesus wearing out because the name of Jesus is everlasting. There is healing in that name. There's power in that name. There's deliverance in that name. The name of Jesus does not expire. The name of Jesus didn't expire when he died. The name of Jesus didn't expire when he was raised from the dead and he ascended back up into heaven. The name of Jesus did not expire. The name of Jesus did not lose power. The name of Jesus didn't lose potency. No, the name of Jesus is still as powerful, still as potent today as it was when it was first revealed. So, his name endures forever. The name of Jesus will last into the next age, the age to come. Excuse me. All right. So check out this verse right here. Isaiah 63 verse 12. If you've been following with this plan, you've probably read this before when we went through the book of Isaiah. But here it is again, just in case you missed it. That led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name. This is speaking about God. He has an everlasting name. <clears throat> it's just like his life. It's everlasting. It doesn't end. It doesn't expire. It doesn't run out. None of that. The name of the Lord endures. Your kids, are going to call on the name of the Lord. And if Jesus tarries, your children's children are going to call on the name of the Lord. And your children's children's children are going to call on the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, at the mention of his name, every knee will bow. The name of Jesus is going to last until the end and beyond. And everyone, everyone will bow to the name of Jesus. That's putting it in, into perspective right there. The name of Jesus as an everlasting name. Thank you, God. Now let's slide into the next verse. Second Peter chapter three, verse one. And here's what the Bible says. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Peter makes an excellent point here. He says that I'm going to stir up your pure mind 
by way of remembrance. I'm going to stir you up by making you remember things that I've been telling you all along. I'm going to tell it to you again because I want to stir you up. A lot of people wonder, <clears throat> well, why do we preach the same thing or uh, preachers have the same message or they say the same thing over and over again. Yeah, sometimes they do. I know I do that. I am very repetitive when it comes to revelation. Why? Because it's truth. What else can you add to the truth other than the truth? There's only so much truth that you can speak. So they're served as reminders, as refreshers, as a way to be stirred up. If someone tells you, hey, love your brother, you're like, man, you know what, I know that. But you hear a whole, you hear a whole sermon on love your brother, it stirs you up, it motivates you, it sparks a fire, and it, it causes a zeal to well up. And we need that. I need that kind of motivation. I like it when I get stirred up. When I listen to some preachers, Man, and, and it's like they put a fire in your soul. And I want that. And if these videos put a fire in your soul, then I give God all the glory. I'm doing what I set out to do in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Now, among some of the people that I watch is Kent Hovind. And Kent Hovind doesn't really have a filter. He's a savage. He is a <clears throat> Christian scientist that has spent a lifetime debunking the evolution theory and just battling all kinds of professors and ma making them look dumb in a, just to be plain and direct and he said <clears throat> when he reads this verse when they say willingly ignorant he says dumb on purpose and i thought wow that's pretty harsh that's pretty sharp but when you really think about it <laughs> how far from the truth is that willingly ignorant People are <clears throat> willingly ignorant about what? Willingly ignorant about the creation. That's what the Bible says here. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old. <clears throat> so it's talking about the Bible. Well, yeah, the Bible, but it's talking about the word of God. Creating the heavens and the earth. So when it comes to creation... This is what Peter is saying. People are willingly ignorant of God's creation. Anytime that you ignore all of the evidence that's before you, even on a scientific level, when you begin to consider the intricacies of biology, and you begin to study plants and trees in the cycle of life, when you begin to study the body and how everything works together and cells and all of that stuff, to <clears throat> believe that that just came just spontaneously, whew, that takes a tremendous amount of faith. So people are willingly ignorant of the creation. And it's probably because they don't want to be held accountable. They don't want to follow the rules that God has they want to do things their way. They love sin and they want to continue to enjoy their sin. But that's no excuse. Willing ignorance <clears throat> doesn't excuse it. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. How much more so if you willingly reject that knowledge? I don't think there'll be any escape. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It is God's will that all come to repentance. 
And God will lead people down the road of repentance to bring them to that point. Sometimes the road is a long road. Sometimes it's a very short road. It all depends on where your heart is. But God knows how to lead you. It is not his will that any perish. God doesn't want people to die. We read in, was it Ezekiel? <clears throat> God doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked because a soul is lost. When someone dies in their sins and they get lost, God doesn't rejoice over that. God doesn't say, ah, you got what you deserve. God doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked because he knows that death is forever and judgment is eternal. God is not slack concerning his promise. That's good news for somebody. Do you have a promise from God? Has God said to you that he was going to do X or that he was going to do Y or that he was going to perform this or to do that and you haven't seen it yet? Well, God is not slack concerning his promises. Hold on, brother. Hold on, sister. And continue to bless God by being faithful. Continue to believe. Don't give up. Listen, if God said it, he's absolutely going to do it. He has every intention of fulfilling his word. And maybe this is where we might need some long suffering. Just like God is long suffering to us word, maybe we should be long suffering with God. Or maybe there is another word for that. A word that we've talked about before several times and that is patience we just have to be patient that's what God would want for us to wait on him to bring the promises to pass with a good attitude and with a good mind in the matter brothers and sisters may the Lord bless you and keep you may he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, and may he give you peace. Please like this video, hit the subscribe button. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure you click that bell for notifications. Share this with your family and with your friends. It might be that this is the video that gets their, uh, that gets their attention. And hey, we know that God is long suffering. So if you've been sending them videos, sending them videos, and they're watching them, keep on sending them videos. Because if God is long suffering, how much more should we be? If God is patient for the fruit of the earth, how much more should we be? So if God can do it, we can do it. Why? Because God is with us. God bless you all. May the grace of God be with you. Lord have mercy, please have mercy on me, and if I done done somebody wrong, have mercy if you